to the portal podcast with bob colbert i'm your host bob colbert and uh, i wanted to extend uh, I, I w- hope you had the greatest of holidays uh, christmas and new years to the fan base here uh, we certainly did we took a little break uh, the the staff here at uh, inspiration tv and the ai cinema's studios cinematic studios so we took a needed break uh, if you noticed i missed saturday last yesterday uh, we had some extended family still in town so they had attended the um, uh, alabama and michigan game at the rose bowl so uh, they were here and wanted to see us so we went back down to uh, into Los Angeles and where they were, uh, and uh, yeah, I spent some time with them. So I missed uh, Saturday. My apologies. We'll try not to miss too many podcasts, but sometimes it can't be helped. All righty. Uh, <clears throat> if you remember last uh, uh, period uh, podcast, w- we had looked at the. Temple of Antonio and Faustina, Antonius and Faustina. So this had become a church, um, Catholic church. So uh, today what we're going to do is we're going to be studying the Temple of Espavian and Titus. So let's go to the video. And I'll catch you on the other side. To the Divine Faustina, by decree of the Senate. The ten monolithic Corinthian columns of its proneos are 17 meters tall. The rich bas-reliefs of the frieze under the cornice of garland and griffins and candelabri were often copied from the 16th through the 19th centuries. The temple was converted into a Roman Catholic church the Chiesa Il San Lorenzo in Miranda, perhaps as early as the 17th century, but it is only attested in the 11th century work of Mirabile Urbis Romae. Miranda may derive from the name of a benefactress. The Temple of Vespasian and Tito's Tempio di Spasiano is located in Rome at the western end of the Roman Forum, between the Temple of Concordia and the Temple of Saturn. It is dedicated to the deified Vespasian and his son, the deified Titus. All righty. <clears throat> so, uh, again, we had uh, reviewed uh, the Temple of uh, Antonius and Faustina last, and 
the video, these kind of cross pollinate each other. So that that kind of rolled over into episode 10. At the latter part, we start the Temple of Vespasian and Titus. So I'll go ahead and do some reading on it. So the Temple of uh, Vespasian and Titus, also known in Italian as Tipio di Vespiano, is located in Rome at the western end of the Roman Forum between the Temple of Concordia and the Temple of Saturn. It is dedicated to the deified Vespavian and his son, the deified Titus. It was begun by Titus in AD 79 after Vespasian's death and Titus' succession. Titus' brother, Domitian, completed and dedicated the temple to Titus and Vespavian in approximately 87 AD. Throughout the Roman history, there was an emphasis on increasing the fame and glory of a family name, often through monuments commemorating the deceased. Therefore, the temple was constructed to honor the Flavian dynasty, which comprised the emperors Vespavian, which was 69 to 79 AD, Titus, 79 to 81 AD, and Domitian, 81 to 96 AD. Historians question whether or not Titus and Domitian had a good relationship. However, Domitian ensured the deification of his brother into the imperial cult in order to exalt the prominence of the Flavian name. Titus and Vespavian were each deified through the ceremony of Apathos. In doing so, a tradition guarantees that Roman citizens and subjects would honor Vespavian and Titus, or at least honor their genius as Roman deities. The imperial cult worship was as much a sign of allegiance to the emperor of Rome or as a political di- diplomatic gesture as it was a formal religion. Okay, the structure of the temple, the temple of Vespavian, was in the Corinthian order, Hetsa style, Hexa style uh, is with a portico six columns wide, and the pro style with freestanding columns that are widely spaced apart in a row. It was particularly narrow due to the limited space available in the Roman form area, measuring 33 meters long, 22 meters wide, in a constricted space between the temple and the Temple of Concord. A small two-story vaulted room made of brick and concrete and lined with marble was built against the wall of the tabularium and apparently dedicated to Titus. Construction and renovation, Titus began the construction and presumably finished the foundations made of tough concrete and the core of the podium made of white marble. Domitian, however, completed the interior work after Titus' death. The cella inner walls were the, in tabertine, lined with marbles imported at great expense from the eastern Roman provinces. The interior is highly ornate, and the frieze, that's the inscription up on the top, depicts sacred objects that would have been used as symbols or badges of the various priestly collegia in Rome. Around 200 to 205 AD, emperors Septimius Severus and his son Antonius Caracalla Caracalla, conducted renovations on the temple. In the medieval and modern history, the temple suffered significant damage during the medieval times, particularly in circa 1300, under Pope Boniface the Eighth, and in Pope Nicholas V's remodeling of the Forum, which involved the demolition of both the angles of the template, temple on the Forum side and the reconstruction of its front as a what uh, as a fortress with corner t- towers. All that survived today is the podium core with some of its pepperino lining, parts of the cella, two fragments of the tabertine, 
wall and part of the pedestal at its back for the cult statues and three Corinthian column, columns uh, at Pernia's southeast corner, as you can see in the image to the right. All right, well, that's all the reading on that. <clears throat> I'll show a map. Let me. So let me hide Temple Park. Okay. So if you're, I know it's hard to see this, but in the Circle Park to the lower right, that's the Coliseum. And and then as you're going westward, slightly north, northwest, or where the blue spot there, uh, that's where the Temple of Vespavian and Titus is located. So it's on the far west end of the Roman Forum complex area. So yeah, let me take that off and put that back on. So I don't have my sketch file model uh, pulled up to go a little bit further on it. And so what I'll do is I will uh, let you look at the video again. And uh, as a kind of a, a reminding uh, reinforcement. And I'll catch you on the other side. To the Divine Faustina by decree of the Senate. The ten monolithic Corinthian columns of its proneos are 17 meters tall. The rich bas-reliefs of the frieze under the cornice of garland and griffins and candelabri were often copied from the 16th through the 19th centuries. The temple was converted into a Roman Catholic church, the Chiesa Il San Lorenzo in Miranda, perhaps as early as the 17th century but it is only attested in the 11th century work of Mirabile Urbis Romae. Miranda may derive from the name of a benefactress. The Temple of Vespasian and Tito's Tempio di Spasiano is located in Rome at the western end of the Roman Forum between the Temple of Concordia and the Temple of Saturn. It is dedicated to the deified Vespasian and his son, the deified Titus. All righty. Well, I know it was a short broadcast. If you'll uh, catch us at 10 o'clock uh, Pacific Standard Time, two hours from now, nearly, uh, or slightly less, uh, <clears throat> we're going to, no, let me uh, start by saying, normally I wouldn't talk about political matters or sporting matters because you really can't win in those situations. There's kind of like half or four or half or against. But I wanted to talk on the sporting side of it in particular since since we were had Alabama here. I, I'm an alumni of uh, the University of Alabama, and we uh, played in the Rose Bowl against Michigan. Michigan won, and rightly so. Uh, they were a very good team. And it was kind of a tip for tat score wise all throughout the game. And so both teams were uh, very competitive against each other. Of course, I would have liked Alabama to have won, but they didn't uh, for various reasons. But uh, I congratulate Michigan. And I'm looking forward to Monday in the championship game, uh, college football play uh, championship game against uh, Washington, so which was a equally very competitive game. So, yeah. So if you'll catch us there, what we're going to be talking about in particular is did the college football playoff selection committee get the uh, right teams in the Final Four? There was a lot of controversy there, and I wanted to, you know, bring my two cents worth into it what it's for what it's worth uh in particular i think the committee my, my opinion is they did get it right because uh, even though florida state had a 13 and 0 record and i commend them for that the problem was was they had uh, two uh, uh quarterbacks their main and their backup injured and were not playing 
and I, I believe there was a couple of others, significant players that were not playing as well. And uh, this occurred kind of like in the late part of their season. So uh, the character or the nature of the team significantly changed. All right. So if you were to have watched the game against Georgia, they played Georgia, Florida, I mean, uh, Florida State played Georgia uh, in, I believe, the Orange Bowl, and it was a blowout, 63-3. to And uh, so I would say uh, that Florida State, you know, just didn't have that strength and competitive ability at that time during the season to match Georgia. And, uh, yeah. So that was a, a game. If you'll uh, catch us, we'll talk about that further. Also, I wanted to talk about the Neil. And this is, a, you know, like, it's not really pl- paying players to play. It's more of their ability to capture some monies or monetary value on their image and lightness and and so so but i wanted to talk about that and kind of see where the uh, college football is going into the future and there's also some expansion of conferences i know the southeastern conference is expanding so some other conferences are contracting going away potentially and so there, there's some changes there. So, yeah. So catch us at 10 o'clock Pacific Standard Time for the table talk. Uh, we'll have a sporting sports. Uh, most likely we'll never do politics because it's a losing game. <laughs> I mean, you know, you got half Republican, half of the country Democrat, and they're all fighting against each other. I mean, it's, it's a sh- shit show. <laughs> so that's way it is so all right so i hope that you have it's sunday so i hope you have a great remainder uh week of the weekend sunday uh and catch us next week on the portal podcast saturday next week y'all have a great day take care my friends You to me, but I can't let it go so easily until I see what it's